utilitarian things in Britain's muddy underbelly. And obviously, a machine like this cannot possibly be converted into a sports car. Or can it? First of all, we have to remove this rather ungainly body. Now, you can't do that with a modern car because the body is the chassis, it's the skeleton. If you take it away, you're left with nothing more than a collection of unjoined up parts. However, you can remove the body on an old discovery like this, using nothing more than one of these. After just 40 minutes with no help from anyone else, I ended up with this. Obviously, it's, it's still utilitarian. It'll still wade through rivers and draw its way up muddy banks. But now there's a, a sporty flavor as well. Without the heavy body, it feels nimble, agile, light. If it weren't for the fact that the windscreen is now very close to my face, it would feel like a Lamborghini Gallardo. The only real problem with this is that Britain is a police state, and if I took this on the public road, I'd be stopped immediately by the constabulary who would point out that I was contravening about 4,870 different laws. It's not warm either. Oh no, that's stupid! Happily, both these problems would be solved when I fitted it with the body from a sports car. And this is the sports car I've gone for. A 1978 MGB. Highly trained men are now removing its skin, which will then be mated in a delicate two-hour operation to the internal organs of the mud-plugging V8. The following morning, my incredible car was ready. is incredible that in a shed I have created something which has eluded the combined might of the motor industry. It is a proper sports utility vehicle. I call it the MGB and now I'm going to find out how well it works on the road. This is magnificent. And it is quick. Oh, yeah. To demonstrate just how quick, I'm going to do a drag race against the motor industry's idea of an SUV. A little bit of play there. Do this. Oh, yes, look at this. The 1.5 litre diesel is no match with the 3.9 litre V8 MGD. Come on, pride of Britain. performance box ticked, I continued my testing. In many ways, the MGD puts me in mind of an Audi R8 Spider. I mean, OK, in the Audi, the, the, the dials would work, and the switches, and the brakes, and the steering, and it's a bit less bouncy, but both of them 
our four-wheel drive, two-seater, drop-head V8. There is, however, one very big difference between the two cars. You can't do this in an Audi. Oh, yes, yes. Moments ago, I was herring round a, a handling track, and now look. <laughs> Brilliant! Oh, no, not now, you bastard. I mean, you wonderful thing. Choke? No. Oh. Yeah, that... that. It's, it's, it's on its shutdown thing. It, it's just to save fuel. It goes on two cylinders sometimes. Once the engine management thingy had run its um, diagnostic program, oh, I was back on the move. Here we go. Yes. Mighty four-wheel drive system hauling me up there. What the hell? Stopping, stopping. Oh, Lord. That is not right, is it? As I got going for the second time, I realised I'd been a bit of a chump. The mistake I've made, of course, is that I've introduced you to this car before I've really tested it. That's not what car makers do. They they test the car and then show it to the, the press and the public. I'm doing that the other way around. I'm introducing this to you before I've done the testing. And... Oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> yeah, you little beauty. Yes, what was I saying? I think the issue is, really, you're watching my workings out here. What you really want to see is the finished product. That's what I should have done. Oh, my Christ's sake. Right. At this point, I decided, for no particular reason, to scrap the MG idea and go for something else instead. This is what I chose, a 1980s Mercedes SL, partly because it's the very essence of quiet, urban restraint, taste and elegance. It's a car that was driven by Bobby Ewing in Dallas. Mostly, though, I chose it because it would fit more snugly on the Discovery chassis. This time, the men worked tirelessly for nearly a whole day to marry the two cars, and the result was spectacular. It's a car I have justifiably called the Excellent. The internal organs from a Land Rover Discovery mated to the beautiful skin of a glamorous Mercedes SL to create a vision of pure, What's the word? Rubbish. rubbish. It's not rubbish. Did you paint it with a brush or a bucket? It's got those headlights that, that swivel when you go around a bend look so that they point at the road. OK, let me ask you this. Which would you rather have, the excellent or that Porsche? That, that Porsche. Porsche. Why? Because, because it's, it's better in every single way. To prove my cynical colleagues wrong, I invited them to go for a drive. Oh, kind. You see, it's, it's an optional extra for the shorter gentleman. You comfy, Hammond? No. <laughs> no, is this as in as I can get? Yeah. Oh. Right, listen to this. Oh, no, it moves! We'd only gone a few miles before Rich and James completely changed their minds and realised that the excellent was the best car they've ever been in. No, we haven't. Stop saying things in voiceover that aren't true. Is it not? I thought you'd change your mind. No, maybe a bit. It's worse than I thought. Can I put the heater on? That's not connected. Is it not? No. What's that dial down there left of the steering wheel? Speedometer. 
Well, why have you got that one, not that one? That doesn't work. Has it got a fuel gauge? Not as such. Has it got a temperature gauge? Not really. There's a lot of wires hanging out of the dash that aren't connected to things. You haven't yes. given it an interior. <laughs> I can see the road. I can as well. No, there's a hole in the floor. While Hammond and May had one or two minor issues, they both agreed that if I were to put my car into production, it would make me a fortune. No, we didn't agree to that either. No, I've done the maths, honestly. The Discovery was two and a half thousand, Mercedes, mm -hmm. four and a half thousand, mm -hmm. seven thousand pounds for the work, that's fourteen thousand quid. Mm -hmm. I could sell this for a hundred and twenty thousand. No, you couldn't. Yes, I could. <laughs> a, KN, a KN Turbo is 120. A, a KN Turbo is a proper car built by Porsche. This is two scrap cars glued together by a Muppet. It, it isn't designed for people like you. What? Oh. People with eyes. People who can dress themselves in the morning. I'll tell you exactly who will buy this car. People who use roundy ended scissors. <laughs> Footballers. No, they, they won't. Footballers like Ferraris. And yeah, and Bentleys and yeah, Range Rovers exactly. and Aston Martins Not and all that. this thing. To prove them wrong again, I decided to head for the nearby Chelsea training ground. These are people who understand cars, not like you two. Yeah, they understand cars. That's why they buy Range Rover Sports and Aston Martins. Mm. They buy those things because they didn't know that you could do this. I like my car. It's shit. They're flocking to it, aren't they? You just watch. Do you mind if I go and stand next to something else? Soon, some players arrived, which gave Richard and James a chance to show off their footballing knowledge. You're really tall. You should play in goal. Yeah, I do. I play in goal. I know that, yeah. Goalkeeper. So what part of Chelsea are you from? I'm from Basel. Oh. How do you know they're footballers? Well, do you not recognise them? Well, they're in football. You, they, they, he doesn't yeah. even recognise you. Where's, um, where's Alex Ferguson? Why don't we ask him? At this point, I dismissed my ignorant colleagues so that I could operate the subtitle machine. Déjà, premièrement. À Londres, il fait froid. Donc, décapotable, c'est pas bon. Non, c'est pas très confortable. Regarde, je peux pas, je regarde pas, je peux pas voir. Can you do keepy uppy? Yeah. Take a shot at me. Well, that's ridiculous, because what can I do with that? supposed to jump. I think this is flipping horrific. So you've, you've butchered a classic car. Right, watch this. Little toss. No. No, 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 Having established that all top professional footballers loved my car, we got back on the road. So did you get any orders? Do you know, I noticed that the car park was still full of Mercedes G-Class when we left. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. Listen, I could put this into an auction, one of those posh market ones, and it would sell for £120,000. It would not! <laughs> to prove them wrong again, Gentlemen, mm -hmm. yes. people are examining the Yeah, they're, yeah, the, they're organizers. the organizers. They're wondering. They're wondering about their carpet. Handcrafted by a renowned British atelier. Sympathetically marries the chassis and the yes. steam. Does... Did you write that? You hammered that bit onto it. that bit. The interior would benefit from some minor attention. Well, yes, what? with a hand grenade. Lot number 132. Soon the auction was underway. Ferrari 308 GTB at £118,000. Lot number 127. Start me with this at 300000 And many of the punters were happy to pay six-figure sums for the cars on offer. At 270000 
285 for the Countach. One, two, the Countach just went for £285,000. I think I'm going to sell the Exxon for more than out. this. And then it was time. Moving on to lot number 138A, the excellent, oh. uh, fantastic, handcrafted, very unusual machine, as you can Don't see. Don't want you with. A uh, beautiful, stylish Mercedes-Benz coachwork. Again, very unusual, unique, and one of the most car uh, here for sale this afternoon. Start me, if you will, on this at £425. At £425. Any advance at £400? £500? £550 anyway. £550 here. £600 here. £650. £650. £700 now. At £650. £700 anywhere. £700 here. £700. £800 now. Let's go for £1,000. Now let's get going. Come on, let's sell this car. A thousand pounds here on my right. A thousand pounds. Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred here. Two thousand, if you wish. It's two thousand and five. Two five. Three thousand now. It's three thousand here. Three five anywhere. Three one. <laughs> At three thousand one hundred. Three thousand two hundred pounds. At three thousand five hundred pounds. Four thousand. At four thousand pounds, at four thousand pounds anymore. At four thousand pounds, you come to see us after. Thank you very much. You just lost, lost ten grand. grand. You could have just thrown it down. The Mark II start me on this ad, if you will. Thirty thousand pounds anywhere? Thirty thousand? Twenty thousand then. Let's get going. Twenty thousand.